we carry along. Be mass, we carry along. You know, you want to make it. I really want to. This is a carillon, which is not a word that I'm familiar with. Um, uh, a load of bells uh, hung up as a memorial to somebody quite boring. Um, so I won't get into that. I thought it was just a sculpture, but what I didn't realise is every uh, so often all the bells ring. And I heard that just as I was approaching. Um, but it's not ringing now, unfortunately, otherwise it must have allowed you to hear those bells. So we're in an interesting area. So you see there's a... a uh, I probably need to come back a little bit. Um, there we go. There's a raised area all around here, an earthwork. So originally, this was the site of a uh, Maori pa, P-A, which is a Maori settlement, usually or often fortified. And then it became a, uh, a um, imperial um, colonial British barracks and um, other military buildings were built here. So, uh, so it was refortified. I don't know if the, the par was a fortified one or not, probably. Uh, and it's got a few interesting things there. So that fountain, uh, which I'll make a bit bigger for you, uh, that's a memorial to local Kiwis that fought in the Boer Wars in South Africa. But more interesting, to me at least, is this uh, little obelisk here, which is a war memorial to the... Uh, Imperial British and Allied troops that died in what's known as the New Zealand Wars. They used to be called the Maori Wars, uh, but people realised that was a bit unfair, really, because the, the Maori people didn't start them. So they're now called the New Zealand Wars. And it's got all the names of different soldiers that died. And naval officers, naval uh, uh, service people as well, not just the army. Uh, Air Force wasn't around at that time, so it was the Navy and the Army. Ah, let's give you a quick look at those wispy clouds, aren't they lovely? Beautiful clouds. And you'll see that, you know, there's a plinth uh, that looks like it should have a statue on top of it. And it did. It had a statue of a, a militia person. Militiaman, militiaman. And it was knocked off. <laughs> it was removed, I think in uh, the 1990s, uh, during a protest. Now... It's interesting, isn't it? This thing about, um, you know, statues that, you know, that reflect uh, things that we now know weren't so great, which during the time we thought were great, you know, but, but the propaganda and uh, jingoism and all the beliefs around at the time. And, you know, do what do you do with uh, these statues? And it's been a big controversy, you know, some, so certain people have, you know, tried to knock them down or have knocked them down in acts of vandalism. Um, and it's very controversial. So some people think, you know, well, rightly so, you know, because, you know, for example, these people reflect oppression, slavery. And in the, in the case of the New Zealand wars, I'm going to sit down because there's a little bench over there and the camera won't be as shaky. Yeah, a little pan around. That, by the way, is a community observatory. And that place just below it is a, a kind of civil defence national disaster emergency preparedness centre, uh, for want of a better word. Probably is a better word for it, or a title. Um, quite a nice little area. So it's all like you know, a public park. You can wander around here. Uh, so I'm going to perch myself. Uh, I'm going to focus on, on the monument, because that's what we're talking about. So... Some people think, yeah, you shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't still have these statues honouring things that aren't honourable. And some people say, well, no, it's of its time, you know, um, we can't judge people from the past with the, the values and mores of uh, modern times, you know, we should, and it's history, we should let it stand. Um, I swing, I swing more towards the former, really. Um, but what I quite like the idea of is I don't, I don't like getting rid of anything historic. And if you, if you get rid of, so I suppose maybe I'm not quite, I'm more in the middle in a way, I guess, aren't I? So my ideal view, my, my position on this really is, um, I don't like the idea of getting rid of things from the past. Because in a way, almost that's like whitewashing, isn't it? That's like kind of pretending that it never happened. If something bad happened, 
it ought to be remembered. You know, it's like, you know, people can go on tours around Auschwitz, you know, which I think is a, is a really good thing. Um, and I would actually, you know, I would like, it's something I would like to do. Um, although I'd be, I'm a bit scared of the idea of going because I think it would just be so harrowing, really. Um, but sometimes I think it's, it's no bad thing to, you know, experience that. So I don't think, I don't think we should just get rid of things. Um, but I'm, I'm of the inclination that we, we should adapt things. So <laughs> I, I don't think many people will agree with me on this. Um, but I think, uh, you know, so there's a statue of somebody who's a slave trader or what have you. Keep the statue um, and build an iron cage around it. You know, and the iron cage would be a piece of art. It wouldn't just be, you know, an ugly thing. It would be, uh, you know, making a statement. And then, um, and then I would have something written on the, you know, a plaque on the iron cage, uh, talking about the person, talking about what they did, talking about, you know, uh, maybe maybe the good things that they achieved if they did achieve good things, maybe the less good things that they achieved, and maybe inviting the viewer to make up their own mind. Um, so that's what I would do. So this, uh, somebody knocked the uh, as part of a protest. It was a Waitangi Day protest. So Waitangi Day in New Zealand. Uh, is all about a treaty that was made between the British Crown and the Maori chiefs of New Zealand, and it uh, it was really good. It, it was um, if you take it seriously, if you think that it was a genuine um, and you know genuine treaty that was offered in good faith. And basically, it said that uh, the British Crown would provide governance and law and order. Uh, but Maori would retain the rights to all the natural resources. Um, and the reason they did this is the British Empire was getting pretty stretched anyway. Um, nobody, uh, although lots of Western people would uh, especially establish colonies with a small sea in, in the country, it was quite a lawless place, lots of different, you know, it's like the Wild West, but people from all sorts of kind of European countries living here and trading here and uh, and kind of doing their own thing so it was kind of lawless and there was a possibility that if Britain didn't kind of uh, take over then uh, other European rivals would and we, well, we can't have that can we? we can't have Johnny Foreigner taking over so and at the time the Empire was becoming a little bit less popular you know especially after some of the uh, some of the, the atrocities that happened in other parts of the Empire and um, so some horrible things happened in, to Aboriginal people in, in New Zealand. Do we say Aboriginal anymore or do we say something else? Uh, tell me in the comments, tell me nicely because I genuinely want to know. Um, so rather than just kind of take over and colonise, they uh, created the, this treaty which they offered to the Maori chiefs. Now the, the, uh, the Maori people were uh, consisted of uh, a number of different chiefdom, chiefdoms tribes and kingdoms, they're known as iwi. Uh, so it wasn't just like they had to negotiate with, with one uh, regional leader, they had to negotiate with a whole bunch of them. Uh, some signed this treaty and agreed to it, others didn't. And there is a lot of controversy about uh, whether it was uh, done in good faith, uh, whether it was all a bit of a trick from the start. But basically what happened uh, not too much later is that uh, land was stolen from the Maori people en masse um, and uh, after them having been promised that it belonged to them. Uh, I mean, it's complicated. There's, there's, you know, we, we could, you could do a whole series of videos on this and I'm not a historian. I love history, but I'm, I'm no historian. Uh, but basically, uh, the uh, people, the, the British tried to take the land uh, on, you know, in a, on a, in a massive scale uh, and the Maori people uh, quite unreasonably objected to this and uh, some of them went to war and uh, it was um, it's, it's an interesting war, it's a horrible war, all wars are horrible um, but it was one of the wars in which the first ever trench warfare uh, is, is recorded as having taken place and that was the Maori and they actually scored a victory over the British through using trench warfare uh, and some really quite clever tactics. Um, so this monument is to basically the uh, the colonial side of the uh, Maori Wars, to all the people that fell in, in those wars. Now I think, you know, just by way of example of what I'm talking about, 
with what I would like to see. I would like to see uh, another monument next to it as a memorial to the Maori people that died, or the, pe the Maoris that died fighting the colonial British. Because uh, some of the Maori people fought for the British, some of them fought against the British, most fought against, obviously, that's what, what started the war. Uh, but I would stick another monument next to it uh, to honour both sides. Now, as to whether the statue should have been knocked off, um, I don't hold with vandalism. I, I, you know, I like history. I don't like to see old monuments damaged. But I must admit, you know, I'm quite glad. Uh, I think it was, you know, I, I kind of um, approve of that action. I think it was appropriate. Um, I like that the whole thing hasn't been destroyed. But yeah, I think we should have... I mean, it's interesting that we've got another monument next to it, to another colonial war. Uh, and no doubt Maori people fought, fought uh, alongside white, um, white New Zealanders in, the, in those wars, um, as has happened ever since, uh, in the wars that New Zealand's been engaged in. Um, but yes, I've been wanting to do a video about this for some time, but I was going to do it on Waitangi Day. Um, but I never actually got around to doing it at the, uh, that, that, time of, that time of year. So there we go. So that's, that's this place. I've shown you the prison in the previous video. I've shown you, I've given you a quick glimpse at the observatory. The Carillon, Carillon of bells, which aren't going to ring for us by the look of it. Um, and the par site and later the, uh, later the barracks and some wispy clouds. And then what I'm going to do now is drive a because I Rando Nautica is being naughty, Rando Nautica, uh, and, and isn't honoring my um, my instruction to uh, set the radius for my travels a little bit wider. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drive out into the middle of nowhere and then I'm going to hit the Rando Nautica and see where it takes me. So hopefully it will go somewhere a bit more interesting than some of the little um, cul-de-sacs and residential roads that we've been down thus far. But I'm glad it's taken us to this location because there is an awful lot here uh, to see. Uh, it's a nice little spot. It's a high place as well. So you can see the sea from here. You can get a view of the, the whole area. Um, so it's, a, it's a, lovely, a lovely spot despite it's, you know, not so nice history in many respects. Okay, I will see you in the next one at the next location and that will hopefully be a little bit more interesting and mysterious. Uh, thank you for watching. Rangimalie.